This uh, next guest, uh, this uh, means a, a hell of a lot to me, and I know it does to you too. Uh, we're so, uh, just so blessed to have him here with us today. We talk about him all the time. Uh, we love him. We know you love him. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tia! You know, I'm here with Tim, but you guys see me all weekend, so to, you ask Tim your questions, and I'm going to help. I'm going to be the Don here and help field the questions. <laughs> uh, we're just so excited you're back, Tim. <laughs> you're not as excited as I am. To be back. Um, such a thrill, and you know, from the minute it happened, we had people asking about you and about yeah, what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's a standard joke. <laughs> same, same thing that happened to me. Oh, crap. <laughs> Are we okay? Huh? Are we okay? Yeah, we're okay. We're here, aren't we? Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> um, all right, well, you have questions. Hi, guys. Um, four years ago at DC, I got the pleasure of meeting you, Tim, for the, for the very first time. And ever since DC, every con that I've gone to, I have uh, made a point to ask Rich, Rob, and Matt uh, what they could they tell a story about you. And every time I've got the potatoes or rotten story. <laughs> <laughs> and my question, my question for you is, uh, what is your favorite Lasseter quote from Sight? <laughs> What's your favorite last little quote from Sight? Uh, probably, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most you could swear. Is that right? You couldn't say shit, you had to say crap? It's basically what I'm running. It's not fucking swearing, my kids are here. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, she's saying. She was saying that, uh, 
they would always, she would always ask uh, Rich and I what our favorite story about you was, and, yeah. <laughs> and Rich likes to tell the, uh, the potatoes au gratin story, <laughs> where you ate all the potatoes au gratin. Oh, I didn't eat all the gosh darn potatoes. But, but you know Richard's fate. Like, the story becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> Um, yes, uh, over here. Hello, in the dark shadows over there. Hi Tim, I'm so happy to meet you and I'm so thankful you're here. This is our third convention, Seattle Con Survivors. Um, so mine is also a psych question. Um, I know throughout the series, Dobson has always been mentioned and Val Kilmer has always been mentioned. Was there ever a plan or were you guys always hoping that he would become Dobson? We were always holding out of who we could get to play Dobson. Dobson, for those of you, do you know, anybody not know what we're talking about? Yeah. So on Psych, there's a character, character that we never saw, but we would always refer to. Just a random guy named Dobson that I would occasionally walk down the hallway and go, Hey, Dobson. <laughs> we just, it just tickled us that we would never show this person. <laughs> so Delight was always trying to get... Um, Charlie Sheen's dad. Help me out. Martin, Martin Sheen. Sheen. Martin, he was always going to get Martin Sheen to come here. Uh, yeah. uh, we had to settle uh, for, oh, Val <laughs> That's awesome. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. So I was wondering, if Chuck and Kane were to get together, what kind of adventures do you think they'd go on together? Uh, Define get together. <laughs> it can be any way you want. There's so many possibilities. I mean, I'm, I'm into it if you're into it. I mean, we're in Vegas. We're in Vegas, right? What happens here stays here. To you, me, and 2,000 people. So what would happen if you and I got to, if, if, if our characters, if our characters aren't supernatural. Oh, our characters. Yeah. Okay, that's very different. Because otherwise I'm thinking, somewhere in the island of the Bahamas. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you make your Bahamas every day? Oh, love it. Wear my Speedo. Oh. I would demand. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm sure that on uh, the character you played on, uh, on Supernatural would have a beef with, with me, right? Cain have a, has a beef with God, I'm sure. Uh, everybody else does. <laughs> I think his main beef is with Lucifer. Oh yeah? Cool, so we're cool. So we're cool, you and me, Cain and God, we're good, baby. Okay. <laughs> we're good, baby. That's on the poster, it says, Cain and God, we're good, baby. <laughs> The theme for our island. That's also the theme on the island. We're good, baby. I'm shaking a drink. We're good, baby. Hey, God, how many eggs better do you want? <laughs> Just one. You got it. You bring the eggs, I'll bring the Benedict. <laughs> so, shows it still. Uh, good times. Thanks for your question. Hey, here's a fun fact about Rob and I. We are distantly, 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 distantly related. Yep. We're doing a little of uh, the old uh, ancestry stuff. And there's a bunch of Benedicts in my life. Ah. And, I'm from, and I'm from Missouri. I'm also from Missouri. <laughs> and so there's, there's a connection there. We're sure of it. We have a, we have a lot of connections like that. We've, well, obviously, the obvious one is we both suffered strokes, but we, we both have separately knew Richard Spate. <laughs> he, he kind of introduced us before we were on the show together. But we are not blaming Richard for the stroke. No. <laughs> Sometimes I do. Um, we both, uh, well, I did a guest star on Psych before. Yes, you That's did. actually the first time I met you. And we had the same agent at the time. Things like that. And we know a lot of the same people. Anyway, and we're related. 
but distant cousins. Which would make it even weirder if we got together. That's true. That's a different show. That's a whole different show. It seems more HBO. <laughs> Maybe Cin stars. Cinemax. 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 Um, okay, over here, is there a question? Hi, my name's Wendy. Uh, first off, I gotta say, strokes suck. Um, Tim, thank you for answering my question on the Larry King Show. You answered uh, her question on the Larry King Show. She asked a question that you answered when you were Oh, thank you Music therapy. Uh, you my like question my now is, what is the most interesting thing you've had to learn to do for a role? So what's the most interesting thing you've had to do for a role? Uh, that you've had to learn for a role? Did I answer this one already? Because I would think I would. Um, the most interesting thing I'd ever had to do for a role to learn is how to uh, jump in a freezing cold river on site because of James O'Day. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? How was it his fault? Because he wrote the freaking episode and directed it. <laughs> That's his fault. Just a pleasure, Fred Red River. That's all. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. Have you ever had to? Oh, for um, did you did you have to learn riding horseback for Gallivant, or did you already know how to do that? Ah. Oh, oh. Actually, um, I already knew how to ride. Although some of the horses, they gave me this horse on Gallivant. There was this massive Parisian stallion. Mm -hmm. Settle down. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a lot of horse training before. And then when we went to Morocco to finish the show, they couldn't bring that horse, so they doubled him in Morocco. Our um, wrangler there did not speak English. He was just a French speaking man. So I took the horse out a couple times just to kind of get used to him. I'm sitting in the waiting time and I pull back on the range and he comes up and he's like, no, no, no. Mm. Like, I have no idea what the hell this one's talking about. <laughs> so then one day, in between scenes, I'm sitting on the horse and he starts to like, pull back on the range and I'm thinking, you remember this guy saying no and I'm like, well, how the hell do I stop this freaking horse? <laughs> so then I pull back on the range and he rears up. Then his, the guy's son trots over in perfect English tells me that this horse is trained that when you pull back on the reins, he, he goes up home. He goes up his yeah. But that would have been good information to have. Right? <laughs> so there was a scene on mine with Karen David, and we are going hell back to leather out of this spot. And this horse was so big, its, its gait was huge. So as he takes his first step, my right foot comes out of the stirrup. Oh, crap, now we're over Because I can't, I can't stop the thing. And he's just going towards an irrigation ditch, and there's a curb coming up like So I kind of just grab onto his mane as hard as I can, and just finally, luckily, he slows down and stops, and I do not go into the ditch. <laughs> wow, that's terrifying. It was fun, though. <laughs> I did not, I never auditioned for that show, I never had the chance to, but I don't know if I could have pulled it off if I had to, I had to do the horse riding. I totally have faith I could have. Okay, cool. You would have been great on Yeah, that would have been fun. It would have been fun. If only. Next time. There's a horse really? riding musical. I'm learning this for a while. That's right. It all comes together. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to think what the, the weirdest, the, the, heart, the thing that I've had to do uh, to learn. Uh, there have been things that I haven't learned that I should have learned. <laughs> I had to juggle for a movie one time, and I never quite learned, so they had to cut around me. <laughs> it just shots me like, cut, cut, cut. Yeah, yeah Charlie's one of those things was like, I kind of need to know going in. Yeah, well, I took lessons, but it didn't, it didn't work. So you're confident enough to go, yeah, I can juggle. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, one time in this pilot, I had to play this piano part, and I don't play piano, but I learned just that part, and I learned it pretty well. Right, so... Is your piano here? I think there is. So, I don't remember. Don't ask me. And then they thought I really played the piano, so they're like, hey, we're just going to keep rolling and just go to something else. And I was like... You're up. This is a show concert. I don't know. That's all I know. 
<laughs> Rob, stop. stop. You know, there's an old joke in Hollywood where they say, well, because at one time in the 50s, every show on TV was Western. The joke was if somebody asks you if you can ride a horse, you, you say yes. It was a bit of a tangent from your family. I was circling back to the horse. Yeah, I'm with you. So you, you say you're going to ride a horse, you just say you can ride a horse. No matter what, just say you can ride the horse. Yeah, because you want to get the job. I've made a career off of that, just <laughs> saying I can ride the horse. <laughs> One time I, 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 I said I could ski before I knew how to ski for a Breckenridge Ski Resort commercial. And I booked it, and then I had a horrible time on the mountain. Actually <laughs> laying down on the mountain, I would imagine. I was falling down the mountain. <laughs> they would take me off the mountain in one of those like cars that has you on the side. Like, uh, <laughs> and all the people on the left are going. Uh, look at that. <laughs> exactly. He said he could ride a horse. <laughs> uh, but where are we? We're here. Hello. Uh, so in a recent episode, they brought back the storyline of the Mark of Cain. And so I was wondering if they were to bring back Cain, what would you want that to look like? Well, God and I get together, probably. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things I always want to see more of Cain was more of his backstory when he was with the Knights of Hell. I think that could be a whole other story. Yeah. Of it. yeah. Then starting on the Ted Offensive. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great idea for a show. Let's pitch that show. Pitch it. That's awesome. We'll call it the originals. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. It's fresh. <laughs> I got this idea for these vampires that write diaries. <laughs> What are you going to do with it? I'm going to try to sell it to CW. <laughs> it's called The Vampire's Diaries. <laughs> Plural. So it's a new, fresh. No one's heard of it. <laughs> you just mad at me. Um, Mr. Benedict, first of all, we love the idea. Although we were going to this third page, the scene where the character of God gets together with um, a, an original demon, <laughs> who's not Abaddon. <laughs> I mean, and that's cool, man. Some of our best friends, but um, <laughs> we're intrigued. We just don't think it's CW. I think it's more <laughs> late night HBO. Yeah. <laughs> they made the Bravo. Yeah. <laughs> you probably made this show. <laughs> yes, over here. Uh, first, random medical things really suck. Um, I know I've had a lot of unexpected ones. Um, I was wondering, since sadly, Black on the Way, we didn't get to see much of Last Night in the Psych movie, um, I was wondering, what do you think he would be, how do you think he'd be writing the precinct now? What's your opinion since we didn't get to see it, sadly, on the big screen? What was it, the, since you didn't get to see him on the, as much in the movie, what was the question then after that? Uh, what? How do you think he'd be running? How do you think the precincts, what he's running now, uh, is going? But how do you think we didn't the, get to see it in the movie. How do you think the precinct that he's running now, how do you think that that's going, Lassiter? Since we didn't get to see that really, how, how do you think the precinct... I can tell you exactly, because Psych, the movie 2, is all about Lassie's recovery. <laughs> Actually, that movie really mirrors my recovery. I'm in a... Um, Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so you know what happens in Lester, right? He gets injured, and he's got to recover. I mean, it's in the previews. It's already been all over Twitter. He gets shot and has a stroke. So the, the story is about, it's called Lassie Come Home. It's all about his recovery, and he's in this kind of halfway house recovery. And I was in a kind of a, a halfway house for, for a long time to learn independent living skills, which is like a halfway house for people with brain injuries, which was a barrel of freaking laughs. <laughs> so there's some characters in our movie that are loosely based on 
some of the, well, characters is the only word you can use. Some of the guys that were in the house I was recovering in. I can tell you which ones, but you can watch the movie in April and you'll go, oh, that's brilliant. That's cool. So it, 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 there's a lot in, so it's about getting you through the halfway house and back home again. Yeah. yeah. So James and James came over and we told us the story and about living in this house and he was like, what? I'm putting that in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So we have to say, we have to see the movie before we can't, uh, can't hear that now. We gotta wait and watch the movie to find out what that was. You'll have to come back to another convention after you see it and I'll tell you. <laughs> You know what I really appreciated about you, Tim? Well, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was with you at the beginning a lot. I saw you a lot uh, right after it happened. And like from the beginning, you had a sense of humor and a great attitude. And you were kind of like, yeah, this happened. It sucks. But you know, I, I, didn't, I had fear when it happened to me. I just was afraid. But you had the sense of humor and that sort of Tim way of looking at things that I just, like, from the beginning I was just, I really I was blown away by that, by your positive attitude, and I think that that's gone a long way to you. I would say quick say that to my friends like you, Rob, were huge helps in getting it through that. I mean, I looked at you and your kind of inspiration. I mean, you're, you really set the example of how you my wife and my kids, <laughs> and so much of it is with you guys. I'm, I'm not kidding. No good son. The um, the love I got on Twitter and Instagram was really incredible. So I'm, that's one of the reasons I'm so happy to get back to, to the circuit and to see you guys. We love you. We love you. I love you too. I do rehab every day. These days, right, I want to go to the clinic. I'm just a little tired. I'm like, yeah. Screw it. I want to go to school today. <laughs> Seriously, and I think you guys might. Like, I've got to get my ass out of this bed and start walking again so I can walk out on a stage like this. <laughs> so I hope you know that whatever joy I have on. Um, Maybe had the opportunity to give you through this television show. It's come back a hundred times full. Hundred full? Yeah. Hundred full times? <laughs> lots of times. <laughs> lots and lots and lots and lots of times. We're all family. We're all family. That's right. Always keep fighting. That's right. Yeah. What's man? Well, it's great to have you back. Um, my question is. How nitpicky and vocal do you get now about accessibility? Are you like on from a range of the old man fix this now kind of thing, or do you go home and say, oh, they'll fix it eventually? They have to. Where do you stand these days? About accessibility in himself or other things? Well, when he's trying to get around someplace and he sees something that he either can't get. Do you ever get frustrated about accessibility? Yeah, bad access brother really pisses me off. Mm. You, uh, is there anything to be done about that? I was standing on stage like this and saying, hey, that pissed me off since I gotta fix it. There's a lot of that's been on the books for a long time called the ADA. Yeah, yeah. I'm just really trying to enforce that a little bit more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's just really, until you're in it, or you're trying to get into it, and then you realize you can't or how difficult it is. It really is ridiculous sometimes. So I think that's kind of one of the next phases of my life and career is advocacy and trying to raise awareness to people in all sorts of situations like this. That's great. And is, are, there, are there laws in place when you build a new building? Doesn't it have to have accessibility? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. some of it's not, still not. In there were two examples right off the bat. I was supposed to go to a friend screening at Raleigh Studios down near Paramount. It's an older building, so they, there was no elevator. 
And my brother was like, well, I'll carry you up the stairs. I'm like, um, thanks, no. <laughs> so just stuff like that. So I, yeah. could, I could go to my friends. That's crazy. There's no way, there was no way to get to the second floor? Sure. If three guys wanted to carry me up the stairs, which is insane. I think I read it on. Yeah, I know. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, well, that's a good cause. That's a great cause. Let's Going do it. Let's go. Let's go. You Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just have to get there. That's the problem. <laughs> I'm trying to be a string because you're so damn handsome, so much. <laughs> I really should see it. I mean, really, take take an extra minute when you're in a fight. All just. Um, yes, we have a question over here. <laughs> Hi, um, my name's Juanita. As I've written about you before, your character on Supernatural is by far one of the best side characters that I would love to see over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. I would like to know what you did to prepare when you had to return and have Dean kill you. <laughs> what did you do to prepare yeah, when you had to come back and have Dean kill you? I did a lot of push-ups. Jensen throwing me around like two. Can you tone it down a little bit? I'm trying to look like I'm tough and I'm not outweighed by 170 pounds of muscle. <laughs> so we did. Um, most thing, the main thing I did to prepare was I read the script. <laughs> that's basically that's that's where you start. I mean, it's all. I'd like to say there was some magic pill I took for it, but so that was such a great script. But you just had to read it and hit those beats. Did the stuntmen have a lot to do with that fight? Were there a lot of stuntmen at work? But yeah, I mean, we trained for, we rehearsed for a long, long time. Yeah. But I'm about to say, I don't think any of the doubles were ever used. That's awesome. So I think Jansen did use his double when he was thrown through the window. Sure. <laughs> like you do. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> When you know that I played you yes. wonderfully in, uh, in the uh, that's our other link is that I'm I'm the, the mini you I'm your mini me <laughs> your hair is awesome your hair is awesome hair I love having that hair for a day yeah that was fun I miss the hair but now that I've only got one hand it's really hard to get, like sort of pull it back into a ponytail so it's like yeah okay. You still got great hair. You got really good hair. Yeah. Don't touch it. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, it's my fault. You let me on. So I could touch it. There you go. That's in the spin off. It's in the spin On the island. On the island. Making pina coladas. Hi guys, I just want to say I'm so glad you're both still here, and I love you, and I wanted to ask about Gallivant, if you were both on together, what would you sing together? What would you write for Tim to sing Rob? That's what I wanted to ask. Well, this is exciting. I get to be on Gallivant, and I get to write a song for Gallivant. What would it be, and what would we do? What do you think? You're king. Well, we'd be besties. We'd be besties. <laughs> I think I'd ride on your horse with you. <laughs> Maybe we'd go to a field and make pina coladas. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Go to a field and make pina coladas. And that's what the song would be about. Is the pina coladas? Me side saddle to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Robert. <laughs> Sing me a song. Excuse me. <laughs> We're going to a field to make pina coladas. Just me and you and something that rhymes with coladas. If you let me on the ladders. There you go. That's great. That's a little. You still got it. That's exactly how I'd sing it. 
That's it. Getting caught in the rain. Caught in the rain! That's what we'd see. We'd see that. It, it, it's raining, but we don't care. Yeah. <laughs> you're not into health food, you're into champagne. I'm into champagne. <laughs> Which would be awkward since you just made a whole batch of pinnacle eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that I've got nothing to do with. I don't know what to do with them. But we've got our horse. <laughs> All the time in the world. Uh, I like this show. <laughs> I'm so I'm excited. Yeah, so we're here. Hi, my name is Sam. Um, uh, first off, I would like to say thank you to you guys. You guys don't even realize how many times you guys have saved my life with the TV show. Um, I'm a survivor, a survivor of depression, and um, actually two years ago I almost went through with it and jumped off a building. Um, but um, with your guys' TV show, since I was like 10 years old, you guys have pushed me through and kept me holding on to something, and that means the world to me. So my question for you, I'm sorry if it sounds really morbid. But um, playing Kane, you had a lot of, there were a lot of emotions with that character, so I was curious on what emotion you related to the most. Well, first of all, it's not morbid. So, well, thank you for sharing, because that takes incredible guts. Everybody can tap in it, some kind of anger or some slight hit. And just wanting to um, throw a Jensen through a, a window. Because <laughs> it's so gosh darn more handsome than me. <laughs> just throw his pretty face through the window. Sure. <laughs> face first. <laughs> I'm kidding, I would never do it. Even if I physically could. <laughs> He's just so fucking handsome. <laughs> I feel bad for you, Rob, because you had to work with him so much more than me. Uh, it's not good for my own my own self confidence. He's just so fucking handsome. He's a very good looking. He's a perfect man. Pretty much is. You know this. You're well, thank you for saying that. Aw, oh, shucks. Um, but he's really. Um, you know that story about when he got his ears fit for the monitor, the ear monitor, and the and the ear doctor looked inside his ear canal oh. and had it take a knee like he'd never seen a more perfect. <laughs> I would hope to believe that. A single tear. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, no, he's a perfect human being. Um, but thank you for sharing that, by the way, I don't know where you went, but that, like Tim said, we, we got you, and uh, we always will, we're always right here. Um, yeah, that's not even something you would think of for, because we are, I'm not speaking for Rob here, and I'm sure it's for the entire cast, that we realize how blessed we are that we are in a position to help people like in that kind of situation. Who would have thought that we would ever grow up to get a line of work like this where we could actually affect people's lives? Mm -hmm. I know we did. Well, yeah, no. And, and the other thing is, like, sitting up here, like, we, we battle our own demons. Well, obviously, we both had these physical things happen to us. Um, I, I battle depression. I know, you know we, all, we all we deal with these things, these life things. So we're it's not like we're we know better. It's like I, I'm with you. It sucks sometimes, and it's hard. But I can tell you to hang on because we're all in this together. You know, we're, we're always with. We've got the microphones, but we're just like you. And you, you, like Tim said, you help us so much. You've helped heal us. I firmly believe that the, the thoughts and prayers of, of this these fan group of fans really helped me recover, and um, and the same is true with every, all these other sort of things that I deal with. 
you helped get me through. So anyway, we're repaying the favor, favor and I just want you to know that. It's, it's really, it's one of the greatest privileges of my life to be in this position and do this for a lot of work that I hear stories like that. So, <laughs> I think with, I did it with a, a new friend the other day who was our military advisor on This Is Us. Mm. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> this guy was a, um, is a Marine, Afghan, Vietnam, sorry, Afghan combat vet. And he was over the house around having dinner and was talking about psych. He said how when he was in Afghanistan, he had a bunch of psych episodes on his, on his beat up old iPod. And they would come in from patrol and they would all sit around and hook up like six copy old speakers to it and watch psych episodes to get them wow. keep having just been shot at. So I mean, it's, um, whether it's psych or supernatural or even Galvan, we're all going through, we all have our own battles, whether they're little battles with, on a battlefield or battles with our bodies or our mental health. We're all in the same boat. So I'm just happy that I can help paddle. Well said, sir. Well said. Hi, sir. Uh, I'm Felice. Felice. I traveled 8,000 miles to get here. Oh my gosh, where did you, where did you come from? I'm from the Philippines. Wow, she's from the Philippines. Mm. Uh, my, qu my question is, oh, sorry, I'm so nervous. Um, what is, on the, just on the top of your head, what is the funniest story or personal joke that you got? Either with you two or individual. Funny, funniest story or personal anecdote or joke or something. Happened. Every time I see Rob, I go, "Hey, Rob, guess what happened? <laughs> what? We had strokes." <laughs> hey, that's right. We laugh for hours and have a joke. <laughs> hey, Felice, can I ask you a question? Is this your very first convention? Pardon? Is this your first convention? Yes, it is. It's my first convention in three years. Um, yeah, we. I mean, so we've done a lot of fun stuff. Funny things have happened, usually around Richard Spate. Um, yeah, we've had lots of fun, lots of funny things. I'm, I'm trying to think right now. Just along the lines of what Tim just said, the band was going to play us. We always play a song before people come out on stage. And they asked me what song they should play. I said, well, we should, you should do Stroke Me. <laughs> like the squire. But then we thought maybe that was too dark. So they did, what if God were one of us, since we both played God, you on Lucifer, and me on this. Woo! Uh, yes, sir. What month is it? Um, it is March. And what is March, Rob? March is... March Madness. March is Brain Injury Awareness Month. It is. Yeah. It's ironic. Of course, I didn't remember that. Not 100 percent. There's no second I really got the words out. <laughs> oh, that's 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 great. How perfect. Here we are. Here we are. Brain so, Awareness Month. That's great. Um, wow, you really had me as a, oh, it's March, I don't know, it's my daughter's birthday, it's, uh, and honestly, when you said what month is it, I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> That's something they asked me in the hospital a lot after my stroke, they would ask me what month it is, and to name the months in order and stuff like that, I could never do it. So, I always have this panic when people ask me, like, sorry, I should, I, I, no, 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 it's not. No, 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 it's good, you know, it's like walking out on stage, like, I need to do it. You know, I need to go past the fear and get the answer. So when I went down with my, when my brain tried to kill me, <laughs> it's a fun story. I was in the men's room of an airport in Tampa. Because I'm classy. <laughs> <laughs> I got dragged out into the waiting area. And the paramedics came around and they asked, you know, when you, when they think about a stroke, there's a series of questions they ask you. Yeah. They ask you to smile, because if you're, so you don't see if you have palsy on one side of your face. 
Let me ask you your name. I knew that one. Then got to, um, what year was it? That one I knew. They said, who's president? Which my knee-jerk reaction is always, haven't I suffered enough? <laughs> <laughs> but in the midst of the stroke, I'm still, I'm still with enough to say, wait a second, I'm in Florida, these are first responders. <laughs> this Trump effort, I should really not crack wise right now. <laughs> Don't crack wise, Tim, you beat these guys on your side. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> well, what year is it? 2020. Excellent. You pass. <laughs> I'm going to do that all week. I'm just going to walk the Chico. <laughs> but what time? Give me the day. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny. You know, even, uh, like, just, like, we were going to play a song for DJ, and I was like, what song are we playing? Billy told me what song, and I was like, great. Turned on, and I was like, what, what, did, what song is it? Like, it just, it, does, it just doesn't sink in sometimes. But, uh, whatever. We live with it. Move on. We're here. We're here, look at us. Yeah. I gotta say that six years ago I was in a coma and I had a mini stroke and recovered from that. Took took about a couple weeks, but um, also my sister loves you in psych. So okay, sister, but, thank you. <laughs> she wanted me to tell you that. But my I go all the way back with you uh, uh, to Luck of the Irish. Since it is, yeah. since it is uh, March and month of St. Patrick's Day, I wanted to ask you how it was uh, shooting that TV movie. So, Luck of the Irish, I prepared by watching Lucky of Charms commercials, that's why I got that answer. It's good. It's a day when, you know, I played this Irish step dance and they gave me three whole lessons to learn this ancient form of dance. So they gave me these Irish step shoes, which are basically big tap, tap shoes. I went out in my garage and was trying to practice, and my wife sticks her head up. She's like, what the hell are you doing? I'm, like, Shh, I'm trying, to, trying to learn how to do this damn thing that you kids do since they're 13 years old. She's never let me forget that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, um, did you, did you have an Irish accent in it? I did have a very offensive Irish accent. <laughs> It was straight up lucky charms. <laughs> when I was in, high, in college, I had to do a play with an Irish accent. And I had a, a, a tape to, to show me how to do the accent. And I'll never forget, it was like, one, two, three, four, five. And now in the Irish bro, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I always say that to Adam. Oh, so you played a Northern Irish. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> yes. That's it. Um, but whenever I see Adam first, I'm always like, what does he work like? <laughs> have you ever met Adam? I don't know if you have. Adam's an Irish actor, Irish-American actor. He'll be, he'll be here this weekend. You'll meet him. I'm looking forward to finding him. Yeah. So he was part of the stick. What's that? Oh, he's part of the stick. That's right. He was part of the... I was sitting at home and I received a box in the mail and there was no return address on it. This is weird. And sorry, the, it was, um, the return address was wrong. <laughs> and I opened it up and this beautiful walking stick was in there. Aww. It's got a, 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 a plate on it that says compressor. I'm like, that sounds familiar. And there was a, a price tag on it. It was hugely expensive. So I look at the box, and there's no note. And we're getting ready to throw the box online. I'm like, hang on, wait, go through the box. And there's no way somebody's. I'm like, first of all, what random fan has my home address <laughs> and would send me this without telling me who it is? And so we keep going through the boxes, and I find rolled up, there's a stack of letter, handwritten letters and photographs. And it was from all the guys and gals of the Roman Convention. So it's Rob and Jared and Jensen. Misha and Richard. And Misha and Richard and um, Adam Vargas. Adam Vargas. And actually, the, uh, the great irony of the... Um, sorry. 
that Rome Convention was. When I had the stroke, I was actually I was in Florida and I was getting on a flight to come back to LA to fly to New York to fly to Rome. Mm -hmm. So I, and then I, spoiler alert, I had the stroke, so I couldn't quite get home. <laughs> Those guys went to the store. A couple of times when we've been there together, we, we there's this one store that there was kind of rock and roll Italian clothing and. I'll bet that jacket's from there. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, totally from there. So is this these jeans from there too. That's it. Just those two. <laughs> so the, the boys went belt to the store and picked me up the stick and I call him New York. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. Boy, Shakespeare York. nerds get that one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. New York. Um, okay, we have time for one more question. Okay, Tim? One yes. more. Hi, I want Better to be good. I wanted to thank Tim for picking up Rich's slack and coming in today. <laughs> Richard is, is not here today. Normally he's here with uh, co-hosting with me, but he's not, didn't come. So you, you made up for it. You're very welcome. I hope I just got some good shoes for that. And for me, Galavant was just a perfect storm of everything I love, including Tim. <laughs> So did you know that when you were filming the first season before anybody had seen it, that it was just going to be amazing? Yeah, I'm so glad you liked it. That, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. It's amazing. Yeah. The guy was the job that, Kid Rich was sort of the role that I always felt that I was kind of born to play. It just hit all my theater school stuff. And shooting in England was amazing, and riding these big horses was super fun. <laughs> And you, I remember you, you, you were excited about it. You knew it was going to be a special, a special show. Well, yeah, I mean, you never know, but I was certainly hoping. It seemed like it had all the promise for it. Yeah. And it holds up. It's still good. I think it does. Yeah. And you're awesome in it. I, <laughs> and you were terrific. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. That kid's is called a setup for a company. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> um, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> if I were you, do, I do that all the time. Um, uh, you were great in it, and you're great in everything you do, and we love seeing you in This Is Us. That's so awesome. We're excited about the new Psych movie. And, you know, I've always been a huge fan to, uh, of yours. I look up to you as a person, and I still do, and uh, I love you so much. And it means so much to me personally that you're here, and I look forward to spending many more of these doing this with you again. I'm so happy. Okay. I'm so happy to get to do this panel with you. Because I need you to take care of me and help me out, as you always do. It's been, I hope, I hope you know, Rob, how much help you have been through this trophy. How much I do look up to you and how you survived this and persevered and you know, are back singing and doing what you do. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. Is there any, uh, any, any final thoughts for the, the piece? Uh, sure. I will reiterate how much I appreciate you guys and I'm grateful for everything you've given me. The emotional and the strength to keep going. Oh. One of us. One of us. <laughs> <laughs> when I see stuff on Twitter about people's struggles, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm really familiar with that. Maybe not the exact struggle, but I'm surely familiar with the struggle. Well, I'm sorry, guys. No, I was saying, I think the more that in this world we realize that you know everybody's got their crosses to bear, the better we would all be. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Timothy Robinson, our band.
Thank you, Dan. That's a nice, nice version of what if God were one of us? Extended version. Um, does anyone know what's happening now? <laughs>